Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be getting the Dog Tag Mastery for the MPX PDW in Battlefield 4. Now this is something I did in Battlefield 3 towards, I would say, the end of its life cycle. I decided to get every single weapon, or at least primary weapon, mastery dog tag in the game. It took quite a while, but it was a fun experience and really taught me a lot about all the guns and just how to run with them and be really proficient or at least get lots of kills in what situations they were really best for. Now in order to get your dog tag mastery for any specific weapon you need five service stars with that gun that equates to 500 kills since the MPX PDW just came out in Dragon's Teeth, I really didn't have very many kills to start with, so I had to grind through all 500, and I decided to do so on Dragon's Teeth maps since I'm still really enjoying these maps as they have just become available. Now, Pearl Market is certainly where I got most of my kills. A lot of people hate this map, and I can't blame them. It is very chaotic, but if you kind of abuse the map in the way that it was meant to be abused, stay in the stairwells, get on top of roofs, shoot down at people, learn how the stairwells work. Basically, I would suggest learning how all the stairwells in the game work and just working the different levels of them. There's lots of weird little angles and predictable spots that you can uh, anticipate people camping. Get very familiar with the center capture point on this map. Here, I can actually capture from within the stairwells. Make sure you're in cover. Don't run around on the surface of this roof as you are gonna be exposed to about 30 different spots where snipers can hang out and anybody with an LMG can just sit up as a bipod and pick you off. So when I go on the roof, it's usually just to get a try and, uh, try and get a quick kill and then run back into cover. Quickly moving from stairwell to stairwell can be a great way to change up where you're hiding and keep your opponents guessing. Also, if you know somebody is coming up your stairs, you could wait for them in one of the stairwells, planning to shoot them as they come up, or you can also jump out the window and run up the stairs from behind, catching them totally unsuspecting. I've decided to run defensive perk in this map just because I'm gonna have so many bullets coming at me from different directions an extra hit that I can take is really gonna be well worth it and when I do run out of ammo I manage to usually find a support kit somewhere and rearm the MPX burns through rounds very quickly it's got an 850 round per minute rate of fire it's not particularly effective at range so you're gonna need a lot more shots to down your targets at longer ranges and that's where you're really gonna burn through the ammo fast it's why I like to try and hang out on the roofs and get mostly close quarter shots where this gun is going to really excel but nonetheless you are going to need to engage some targets at medium range and you're going to need at least one full mag to deal with a single target. The biggest enemy you need to worry about while in stairwells is grenades. Expect lots of people to be chucking them down your stairwells and be quick on your feet to get out of the blast radius as soon as possible. Sometimes you just get overwhelmed and there's really a, not a whole lot you can do about it. Check that out, an incendiary kill. You don't really see that every day. Luckily, I do get a revive and I managed to pick off a few more guys before going down in this crazy cluster of a map. Now, the tricky thing about the MPX, especially when playing in close quarters, is that your reload speed is 2.1 seconds for the short reload, which isn't bad, but it's still not that great compared to some of the extremely fast reloading weapons. And the other part is that you only have a 25 round magazine so chances are you're gonna burn through that whole mag and then you're not gonna get the short reload time you're gonna get the long reload time just 2.7 seconds and that's very tricky to do in extreme close quarters it's not in the three second range but it's certainly not something that I would expect or even want from a PDW class weapon the hip fire with this gun is incredibly good if you like laser sights throw it on this gun it's gonna work out well the reason why I'm not using a laser sight now is because I keep going back and forth as to whether or not the the laser sight is actually helpful or harmful. What I mean by this is that sure, the laser sight without argument does improve your hip fire accuracy, right? So why not use it? It seems to be beneficial all around. Well, it also makes you very easy to see, especially when you're pointing your gun at somebody. And reaction times are really the name of the game here in Battlefield. Most of my kills are ADS kills. Every now and then I'll get a hip fire kill in close quarters, but usually those targets are so close that it doesn't really matter too much if I have a laser sight or not. So that being the case, I would rather have uh, that split second before my enemy realizes I'm there or realizes what's going on to actually engage them. And the laser sight just makes that person know instantaneously that there is an enemy, they're aiming at them, and exactly where to aim back. In fact, just aiming at that laser will get you a good body shot and then usually a headshot for a quick kill. So in my opinion, it's really circumstantial. When you're playing against extremely good players, I would say in a competitive game, 
where the laser isn't going to make a huge difference, then perhaps you should just run with the laser sight all the time. But in a casual game, especially larger servers with lots of players where, you know, buying your time and not having the enemy know where you are instantly is really going to be the most useful tool. In those situations, then I will not run with a laser sight. As far as ideal maps go for the MPX, I would not say that Propaganda is the best map for it. You're going to see a lot of my engagement ranges increasing now. This is not where the MPX excels. Any assault rifle is basically going to out damage you at these medium range engagements. It's not to say that you can't kill with the MPX. Obviously, I'm showing you right here that it is perfectly capable of killing at medium range. It's just that you're going to be at a disadvantage. Why take the MPX if you know you're going to be fighting at mostly medium range distances? Now, after a few kills with this gun, you will get the red dot sight. You'll also get an ergo grip really early on, which is definitely a fun way to run this gun, especially if you plan on side strafing a lot while shooting. The ergo grip is going to be excellent. Shooting from the hip, the ergo grip still has a benefit on the weapon. However, a lot of the situations I was fighting people at ended up being medium ranges, and I was aiming down sight and standing still for a lot of it, and for those situations, I decided to go with the stubby grip to try and control the spread of the weapon, as it's going to help a little bit more there than the ergo grip. And here I'm trying to take advantage of the height in Lumpini Gardens and barely squeaking by with the MPX. You'll notice that it's taking uh, a big portion of my magazine just to drop these targets at longer ranges. Not the ideal situation for the MPX, probably fighting on the ground would be a little bit more effective. Now these train cars seem like a good bit of cover. You can always switch to either side depending on where the bullets are coming from, but the mechanics of jumping around them gets weird. Watch this weird jump. I try and jump up here and it just launches me through the train car and off the bridge. There's just some wonky stuff going on there with the trains, and I don't really like fighting around them because I like predictable player movements. That's one of the biggest issues in Battlefield 4, and I shouldn't say biggest issues, but it's one of the things that really just kind of nags on me. All the little things in the environment that you try and jump over or move around and your player reacts in an uncertain way. That can really screw you over in a firefight and put you in some situations that you would rather not be in. Now, it took pretty much all day to get 500 kills with this gun. It was a bit of a grind fest, a little bit less fun than unlocking all the stuff for the Bulldog just because the Bulldog could actually kill people at further ranges. But there we go, got the MPX Mastery Dog Tag and now to move on to a different weapon class. I was thinking about actually picking a different weapon class every time for the Mastery Dog Tag. I don't know how much I can do that for the sniper rifles as those will probably drive me crazy take an extremely long time to get the mastery dog tags but I think I'm gonna try and commit to all the primary weapons last time I did this series with Battlefield 3 I let you guys vote on which gun you wanted me to do the mastery tag with next so why don't we go ahead and do that again I'm gonna put the list of the guns I have yet to get mastery tags with in the video description it's gonna be quite extensive so pick one of the guns on that list put it in the comments section and I will go through and see which gun gets the most comments about it so as always guys Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.